Hello and welcome to this Campus Creations video. Today I'll be explaining a job we did in 2022. We completely remodeled this couple's weed riddled and overgrown backyard. They've been doing a lot of additions and improvements to the house themselves and it's looking great. And we were the help they needed to finish the landscape. In the future, I'll be posting a video of the fence and the retaining wall we built at this property as well. This job consisted of connecting the back entryway to an addition they made to the back of the house, over to the garage, and around the side of the garage to the alleyway. We also took out all of the bushes, grass, and weeds that were growing in the backyard. Unfortunately, there was no way of getting any heavy machines in here, so we had to do almost everything by hand. has planned to make the addition the main entrance from the garage to the house we decided to move the limestone patio that was tucked into the other corner of the house to this area instead to also make it a cozy place to hang out we decided to go back in time and borrow the sunken living room idea from the 60s and include it in this new patio area because of this we had to dig out about 15 inches of dirt at its highest spot This area of the yard has become a sort of dead space. The fence, the large tree overhead, and the house on the opposite side has made it so little sunshine will reach the ground on this side. Because of this, we decided to take out the bushes, which was much more difficult than I expected. You can't see my frustration in the time lapse. And we replaced the weeds with mulch. This area can now become a little play area for their dogs. Carefully lifting up the limestone slabs, we could reuse the class 5 base for the new patio because it has been kept surprisingly clean and has not mixed with dirt. Here we start the sunken patio. We use these charcoal bell guard steps to connect the patio to the walkway we'll be building on top, and then continue the wall with charcoal bell guard diamond straight face retaining wall blocks. They're both six inches thick, but have different width and length dimensions. 
The steps weigh in at 125 pounds each and the blocks are also heavy duty at 76 pounds each. To make it easier when laying down the limestone slabs, we not only lay down the class 5 rock base and compact it once, but we do a thin, final screeding to make sure it's perfectly flat and to the needed level. After, we use a lighter duty plate compactor to give it a smooth finish which will help when we put down the sand afterwards. This sand is used to give the pavers a little cushion and helps in the installation of pavers or slabs making it easier to place and adjust when needed. To prevent the sand from washing out from underneath paper and stone patios like these, you should always fill the cracks and joints with polymeric sand. When it is wet with water, this sand will start to harden and eventually it'll dry into a hard rubber. Two things to note. First, when applying this sand, make sure all surfaces are completely dry. I applied this about an hour after I power washed the slabs. If it is not completely dry, the sand will start to stick wherever there is moisture. Second, if you're applying polymeric sand to small joints like those found between brick pavers, you should use a small vibrating plate compactor to make sure the sand reaches the entire thickness of the paver. Not doing this will cause thin spots in the sand and that will result in early cracking of the sand. In this case, the joints are very big, so vibration was not needed to reach the thickness of the slabs. When it is completely applied, remove any excess sand, use the broom and a blower to get any dust off the surface of the paper area, and start lightly misting the area to give the sand some moisture. It's important to be light on the first coat so the sand doesn't start to run. Wait about 5 minutes to let the sand start congealing, then you can wet it some more so it penetrates to the entire thickness of the polymeric sand.
Black and white seem to be a theme for the exterior of this house. So to continue it in the landscape, we decided on black mulch. When adding mulch to a new area, you should aim to add three inches of it. If you're just recovering an area that already has mulch, just an inch will be fine to give it a top coat. This small patio was a late addition to the project. We used the same class 5 base as before, but then we used crushed granite to set the stones. This gives a little bit more structure to the irregular shaped stone. To make it look neat, we march it to a perfect circle, then cut the edges with a saw. Then we filled the joints in with polymeric sand made especially for surfaces with larger cracks like irregular shaped stones usually have. Here we ran into a problem most construction workers run into, bad products. We bought two pallets of sod that morning for this yard, but when we started to lay it down a short time after, we saw that half of the rolls of sod from one pallet were yellow, steaming, and smelled like alfalfa. Since we were uncertain that it would survive, we took a video, sent it to the store we bought it from, re-rolled the sod, and they replaced it free of charge. Though we did lose out on an hour of my dad driving there and back, we were able to get new sod that we were more sure would survive. Here we have come to the end of this job. It took my dad and I about nine working days to finish it. I think it looks much better than before, almost night and day, and it should be fairly easy to maintain. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you got some insight into what goes into landscape projects. Stay tuned for more videos where we show you the jobs we do, but also give you knowledge that you can put into use in your own home. Take care, and see you next time, and if you can, subscribe, drop a like, and comment on this video. And don't forget to follow our Instagram for real-time updates on jobs we're currently doing.